I'm Kaito. I'm 19 years old. I work in a nursing home. My dad is a manager there. Our mom is no longer with us. She died when she had me. Dad doesn't talk much about her in front of me. He probably thought I felt responsible for her death somehow. He was a very loving father. He did everything for me. He was so loving, I could tell that he loved my mother very much. Then, one day, he brought home a girl. Who's that? Remember how I told you I was going to a funeral today? I met her there. She has nowhere else to go. It's complicated, but she'll be staying with us for a while. He didn't go into details in front of her. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened, though. He probably got in an argument at the funeral regarding who was going to take her, and everyone refused. I'm Kaito. I'm 19. I currently work with my dad at the nursing home. Nice to meet you. I get it. You must be nervous. Sorry. This is Sakura. She's 17. I'm thinking about adopting her until she turns 20. And after everything that happened to her parents, she's in shock. She can't speak. And so, we're now a family of three. She didn't speak, and her expression barely changed. So, it was difficult to figure out what she was thinking. But she just lost her parents. I don't blame her. But even after a year, she was still the same. She just ate and went to sleep, keeping everything to herself. Soon, she stopped going to school. We were worried about her and didn't want to leave her alone. So sometimes we asked our aunt to come by and look after her. Do you think Sakura's gonna be okay? It takes time to heal. Give her some time. I get it. Being there for her is important, but is that enough? Maybe we should be doing something more than that. Maybe she can't get out of this on her own. Maybe she needs someone to help her. I might be wrong. And this might just make things worse for her, but I had to try. Sakura, how long are you going to go on like this? It must be really hard not being able to speak and all, but I think you should share your thoughts with others. You shouldn't bottle up things inside. So here, let's exchange diaries. You can write about anything. Just put your thoughts into words. I wrote the first entry, so it's your turn, Sakura. If possible, let's do this once a day. No pressure, though. I wrote about myself, how I lost my mom, about my dad, what kind of life I lead. I was pretty honest about it, too. I didn't make an effort to tell her about myself because she couldn't speak, so I thought it would be a good place to start to write about myself. The next day, the diary was sitting in front of my door. The note was filled with Sakura's words. She was so sad that her parents were gone. She had no idea what to do, and the fact that she couldn't speak scared her even more. She also wrote that she appreciates us for taking her in. Tears. It must have been really hard for her to write all this, but she has to let it out. She shouldn't keep it all inside. The next day, I returned the diary to Sakura, and the day after that, the diary was back in my room. She did as I suggested, and we were able to exchange diaries on a daily basis. After a while, we realized we both like cats. So I suggested that we go to a cat cafe on the weekend. For the first time, I stepped out of the house with Sakura. Sakura, have you ever owned a cat before? Sakura, you can still use gestures to communicate. You don't need words. There are other ways to communicate. You can even write down your thoughts. Aw, uh -huh. thank you. You're welcome. Since that day, she started trying harder. She would nod and use gestures when I talked to her. She even wrote down her thoughts from time to time. Dad seemed surprised to see her like this, but he seemed very pleased. Sakura and I started talking about the future. She decided to enroll in a GED program. She also came to the nursing home to help us out. Thanks, Sakura. Everyone seems to like you there. Hey. Want to grab a cake or something on the way home? I feel like eating something sweet today. You like sweets? Yes, I do. My voice! You're speaking! You're speaking! <gasps> yes, I love sweets! I love them! Good! All right, <laughs> let's go then! And I love you too, Kaito. 
She took my breath away. I never thought about her like that, but now that she can speak, who knows what'll happen next? My name is Sukasa Janai. Our family is uneasy today because my sister is about to bring over her fiance. Do I look okay? He won't be looking at your clothes, honey. That's not true. It might affect his opinion about Sakura if he thinks that her parents have bad taste. You should dress up too. There's no point in showing off. Calm down, guys. Don't be fighting before they come over. The family's atmosphere is most important, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. Act normal. Act normal. <laughs> They're so enthusiastic. Oh! They're here! Sukasa, answer the door. I'll go prepare the tea. What about me? You just stay out of the way. <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Minoru Hosaka. Hi. We've been waiting for you. Come in. I'm Sakura's brother, Sukasa. We invited them into the living room. They told us that they were getting married, and we asked Minoru some questions. Minoru was working for a foreign firm. We were happy for my sister for finding such a successful man. Good job. Um, Minoru, you know about our daughter's ear, right? Yes, I understand that, ma'am. Her right ear is deaf, and she can manage to hear from her left if she has her hearing aid on, right? Yes, but in crowded areas and loud places, sometimes she can't make out everything. Honey, Minoru's been with Sakura for a while. I'm sure he understands. You're right. They're getting married after all. I can see how much you care about your daughter. I'll do everything I can to protect her and make her happy. Please, take good care of her. Honey, that's my line! <laughs> Sakura was born with a hearing disability. She can manage to hear with her left ear, with a hearing aid. But it doesn't work well in loud environments. She had a tough time as a student because of her disability. But here she was, with a wonderful fiancé. We're all very happy for her. And we're all very grateful for Minoru, who saw past her disability and accepted Sakura. Sakura, you're spending the night, right? You have everything? Yeah. Okay then. I have some business to attend to, so I'll talk to you later. Oh, did Minoru leave already? Yeah, just a minute ago. He left his card case behind. I'll go find him. He shouldn't be far. Oh, there he is. Looks like he's on the phone. <laughs> what a piece of cake. Yeah, I just met her parents. My girlfriend can barely hear. Yeah, she can speak, but sometimes she does that thing where she pretends to hear when she actually doesn't. It's so annoying. But her family is rich. That's a good enough reason if you ask me. Her parents and brother seem pretty dumb too. So it'll be clueless even if I go out with you guys and hang out with other girls. Oh, hey, were you able to catch up to him? Hey, Sakura, do you really feel loved by that guy? I heard him talking on the phone, and he stated that he was marrying you because our family was rich. I don't know who he was talking to, but I don't want you to marry someone who would even joke about such a thing. Sukasa, I'm sorry, but I want to marry him. It seems like you already realized that there's something off about this guy. Why are you trying to marry him then? Because there's no one else who would marry someone like me. Even if he doesn't love me, I just want to get married. Why are you so desperate to get married? I want everyone to be happy for me. That's right. Sakura has really low self-esteem because of her hearing disability. She wants to get married so her parents will be happy. And she wants to leave the house so she doesn't cause us any more trouble. No one in the family wants that for her. I can't believe this guy thinks Sakura is dumb. She sees right through you. Sakura, cancel the marriage. There's no reason to get married if you don't love each other. You're going to be a great wife. Find someone that understands you and loves you for who you are. I promise you'll be okay. Just promise me that you'll marry someone you love. Sukasa. Sakura suddenly canceled the marriage. Minero came back many times to try to convince her to not to. It seems like he borrowed a lot of money to buy watches and cars, expecting to get money from our family as a celebration gift. Tsukasa, you need to help me convince her. She got cold feet all of a sudden. Don't you think it's your fault that she has doubts in the first place and that she doesn't feel loved being with you? But come on, 
She just can't cancel the marriage for no reason. So, you'll be satisfied if there was a reason? What about this for a reason? The fact that you think that our family is a bunch of fools who will be clueless even if you were going and hanging out with other women? Uh-huh. Uh, how do you? And by the way, our family isn't rich. It just seems that way because I make a lot of money. My company, we're pretty close to the company that you work at. Uh, uh, can we keep this between us? If you want to screw around, better do it quickly. You might soon be out of a job. Two years later, Sakura got married. Her husband seems like a very nice guy. They met at a matchmaking party. He used to volunteer at various facilities as a student, and he was good at sign language. When they were in crowded environments, Sakura can't hear well. He uses sign language to talk to her. Sakura seems very happy to be with him. Good for you, Sakura. Best wishes. I'm Riku Hinata. I just started my senior year of high school. Some of us were starting to think about college. Others were trying to make the best out of their last year in high school. Everyone seemed pretty excited. Not many students from our school planned to go to college. So they were going to start working right after graduation. Lunch. The classroom's always so noisy. I'm just going to go somewhere nice and quiet. Hey, Erica! Uh, why do you eat by yourself all the time? Want me to eat with you? I feel so sorry for you! Uh, no thanks. What? What the hell is your problem? Do you not want friends or something? Oh, get out of here! Hey, Hinata. Want to eat lunch together? Uh, not today, but thanks. All right, later. I never liked eating with others either. I wanted to enjoy my meals quietly. After I'm done eating, I have no problem hanging out with friends, but... Maybe I'll go eat at the rooftop. The older students used to hang there, but they're gone now. So it's probably nice and quiet. When I got to the roof, I saw Kamada-san eating lunch by herself. She's always by herself. Some students didn't like that about her. She probably doesn't like eating with others either. I found some shade and sat on the ground and started eating. That became my spot from that day on. There's only one bench on the roof, and she always sat there. Sure, I could get here before her and use the bench, but I never did that. And even if she wasn't here, I probably wouldn't use the bench. And so, we started eating lunch together. Well, kind of. One day, as I was walking up the stairs to the roof, I saw her eating lunch on the stairs. It's raining. Ah, right. The rain. Too bad. I'll just have to eat here. As I was heading back to the classroom, she called me from behind. Why do you eat by yourself? You have friends, don't you? I don't get it. Ah, uh, well, I just like to enjoy my meals quietly. I don't know. I just don't like it when people speak to me when I'm eating. Oh, I see. Well, good thing I didn't talk to you up there then. What about you? Why do you eat alone? Uh, because I want to be alone. No need for friends, huh? Uh, not exactly, but uh, even if I make friends, I'm not sure if things will work out. I, I don't know. I see. That's all we talked about that day. But the next day, when I went to the roof, she asked me to come over to the bench. Kanata, uh, come here and eat with me. Don't worry, I won't say anything. I sat next to her for the first time. As promised, she sat there in silence. Two of us eating lunch together on the same bench, without saying a word. It looks pretty weird, I know. After we finished eating, Kamada-san started talking. So, who makes lunch for you? My mom. What about you? Oh, uh, my parents are gone. My grandma made this for me. I see. She must be really good at cooking. Your lunch looked delicious. Yeah? What you were saying about friends the other day, does it have something to do with your parents being gone? Yeah. First, my dad got sick and died, and then my mom left me, and that's why I live with my grandparents. But having to explain this to people every time is just, um, it's tough. And I can't hide it from my friends either. 
You'll find out sooner or later, and things will get awkward after that. So, why'd you tell me? I don't know. I just thought you'd understand. Um, Muto-san, right? That girl that always tries to talk to you? I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem with her either. Uh, why do you think that? Well, when you talk with friends, you don't really talk about parents or family, right? It's usually about school, teachers, friends, TV shows, food, and so on. But what if they ask me to go out somewhere? I, I don't have any money. I have a job, but I don't have cash to spare. Well, in that case, just have fun in school. You don't have to go out, you know? You may have a certain expectation of what friendship should look like, but just because you can't meet up to those expectations doesn't mean you shouldn't make friends. My friends sometimes invite me to eat lunch with them, but I say no. But even then, they're still my friends, so... I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> You're a good guy, Hinata. Right back at you. Nobody's ever said that to me before. The next day, I start talking with Muro-san. She said she likes being alone, but seeing her smile like that made me happy for some reason. Hinata, can Muro join us for lunch? I heard you want to eat in silence, right? Gotcha! Don't worry! Um, if you made a friend, why don't you just eat with her? Huh? But you're my friend too, aren't you? Yeah, you're her friend, Hinata. Uh, I guess. And so, the three of us started eating lunch together from that day on. Then, Kamada-san gave me a fried egg. She didn't say anything, but I think she was trying to say thank you. By the way, Muto-san was a pretty good student in school as well. She was even planning on going to college. Yay! She had cram school after class, so Kamada-san didn't have to worry about going out and spending money. And she was good at keeping secrets, too. Thanks to her, Kamada-san was no longer a loner at school. Friendship comes in many forms. Really makes you think. I'm Koki Amura. It was a Sunday. I was out in the city. Huh? Is that Sakuraji-san from work? I've never seen her outside of work. Is that her boyfriend? I saw my boss walking with a guy. Her name was Sakuraji-san. One of the best bosses you can have. She was always so nice and caring. She always helped us out whenever we were struggling. But I didn't want to bother her, so I decided to go see a movie. But then I ended up sitting behind them in the theater. What are the odds? Huh? They're here too? This is weird. But I don't think she noticed me. Ugh, you're so useless. I bet you're like this at work too. I'm sorry. I didn't know the restaurant was closed today. They they were open yesterday, so... Huh? Sounds like trouble. Huh? You should have checked this morning, you idiot. Ugh, give me a break. I'm sorry. Ugh, whatever. This movie better be good. Otherwise... <sighs> What's going on? She's acting so weird. I don't get it. Who is that guy? What is his problem? I couldn't really focus on the film. After the movie, the two of them left the theater. I wanted to know where they went after, but it was none of my business, so I headed home. Next day, during work, I glanced at Sakuraji-san a few times, but she seemed fine. She looks okay. I guess it was just a coincidence. They were probably just fighting. But even if that's the case, the way he talked to her, is that normal? She's a superstar at work. She's the best boss anyone could have. What does he know about her? Ugh, so annoying. That day, after work, I decided to have a talk with Sakuraji-san. Um, Sakuraji-san? Huh? Oh, Imura. Um, can I talk to you? Uh, sure. We headed to the station together and went into a coffee shop. I couldn't talk to her about what I saw yesterday near the workplace. Uh, so what's up? Something troubling you at work? Um, no. Um, yesterday, 
I went to the movies and saw you there too. Oh, I see. Yeah. Not exactly what you expected, huh? Are you okay? Huh? I'm not one to judge others. And I've only seen him once, but you just didn't look very happy with him. When it comes to dating, there are good times and bad times. Okay. So, there are good times too, then? Um... Are you really happy with him? Yesterday, you didn't look happy at all. So, what am I like when I'm happy? Um... Remember when the company president handed out those expensive sweets? That smile on your face when you took a bite of that? That's what I'm talking about! I still remember the look on your face. <laughs> I had no idea. You're very observant. Sakuraji-san? He's a very good person at work and everyone adores him, but, um... <laughs> for some reason, uh, he's so cold towards me. I think it's because I'm a bad girlfriend to him. Um, if I may, I think he just acts like a good person at work because, well, because it's work. He's not a jerk because you're a bad person. He's a jerk to begin with. He was so nice when I met him, but after we started dating... See? After he gets what he wants, he stops acting the part. Imura, I've never seen you like this. Depends. The person I like is in trouble. I can't just sit here and watch. Huh? Sakuraji-san, will you go out with me? But, uh, but I have a boyfriend. <laughs> what the? What are you doing here? Who's this? <laughs> Good evening. My name's Imura. I work with Sakuraji-san. Nice to meet you. Ah, I see. My name is Sakurai. I work at DDD Co. I'm her boyfriend. DDD Co? That's a pretty big firm. DDD? Sakurai? Hold up. I remember you. You got fired last week. We got multiple complaints about you regarding harassment towards women in the workplace. Huh? What the? What the hell are you saying? Right back at you. You're no longer with us. Stop lying! Uh, uh, Mr. President! And now, I find out that you are abusive towards your girlfriend, too. No, it's not what you think! Right? Come on! Right? You were like this at work, too? Wow, you're unbelievable! I thought you were just venting when you were with me, but you just treat women like crap, period! You're unbelievable. We're done. I'm breaking up with you. I highly recommend that you do. He also has some lawsuits headed his way. So... Thanks to him, Sakuraji-san was able to learn the truth about Sakurai. She finally ended things with him. He also lost the lawsuits and had to pay a large amount of money to his former colleagues. I thought Sakuraji-san should sue him too. But she says, I don't want anything to do with him. I agree. Because now, she's my girlfriend. My name is Kaito Fujimori. I'm a 20-year-old college student. I have a sister in the 11th grade, and she's at the peak of her rebellious years. She has the typical rebellious attitude, like not wanting her clothes washed alongside mine, and not wanting to eat dinner with the family. Recently, she refuses to take a bath in the same tub that we used, and goes over to her friend's house every day, just to take a bath. She gives me dirty looks when we pass by each other in the hallway, too. So, I was surprised when she came into my room today. Hey, Kaito, can we talk? Uh, sure. May hasn't come into my room since, like, elementary school. Wow, I haven't been in your room in so long. It's pretty clean. Do you have a girlfriend or something? No. Was there something you wanted to talk about? You better not ask for money. Huh? Wait, is that really why you were here? I don't know. I might end up needing some, though. What do you mean? There's nothing I can do if you won't tell me honestly. Kaito, I... I'm... pregnant. My mind started racing in that moment. We haven't spoken in a while. Isn't this topic kind of heavy? 
What do I know? I'm still a virgin. You should tell mom. All these ideas seemed inappropriate. So, I kept these thoughts to myself. She probably thought hard about who to discuss this with, and came to me as a last resort. I shouldn't speak lightly. I haven't been a great brother up until now, but this wasn't something I wasn't prepared to mess up. Have you seen a doctor? Not yet. I just used a pregnancy test. Do you not want mom to know? I'm scared. She'll probably be pissed. Okay then. I'll take you to the hospital. But I haven't decided what I want to do yet! Yeah, but first things first, we should find out your exact situation. Maybe you might not even be pregnant. I've never had a girlfriend, but I've lived long enough to hear stories from my friends. I've heard of situations where the fetus doesn't develop and the girl ends up having a late period, and situations where the fetus is developing outside of the womb, which needs to be treated immediately. Before thinking of next steps, I thought it was important to get a proper diagnosis from a doctor. The questionnaire is asking me if it was an unexpected pregnancy. Well, even married couples have unexpected pregnancies, you know. I feel like I'm being interrogated. You're overthinking. If the baby is unexpected, then there are probably different options and support groups that they can offer you. After the checkup, we found out that May was 11 weeks in. While May was getting checked, I spoke with the nurse. I was told that we could go to the city hall to receive a maternity passbook, and that we should stop by once in a while for checkups. Once a month at first, and more frequently once the baby gets bigger. And that there was a time limit to get an abortion. I collected all kinds of information for me. Have you told your boyfriend already? Not yet. Try calling him. Can we go see him right now? Okay. But I'm not sure what I want to do yet. That's just more reason to talk it over. There's no need to decide everything on your own. Kaito. May called her boyfriend and we went over to his house. May's boyfriend was in 12th grade. Before explaining the situation, I made sure to tell him to stay calm and to take his time to process the information before jumping to any conclusions. Her boyfriend seemed nervous as he listened to May, but I was glad that he didn't say anything extreme out of the heat of the moment. If he panicked, this discussion would have been finished. May, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't contracept properly. It's not your fault, you. I was the one who was always trying to sleep with you. But, are, are you sure we can become parents? I'll have to quit high school. I'll have to give up going to college, too. We can't raise a baby unless I get a job. I'm still a child myself. I don't know what it means to be a mother. I'm not confident that I can do it. But I don't think I'll be able to live a happy life if I give up on this baby. Even if I decide not to have this baby, it doesn't change the fact that this baby was supposed to be born. I don't want to give up. Me too. I don't think I can live with myself if I make you abort this baby. I don't want you to give it up either. You! They made up their minds. So, we decided to tell our parents first. That went smoother than expected. My parents listened calmly to what they had to say. This is a secret, but it's because I explained the situation to them beforehand. Then, they brought our mom with them to explain the situation to the boyfriend's parents. I heard the other parents kept apologizing to my mom, to which my mom replied, Please, there's nothing to apologize about. These two decided on their own. If you apologize, it might make them feel guilty like they did something wrong. Now that they've decided, what they need is hope. Not guilt. One year later, my cute little nephew lives with us. May successfully delivered and became a mother. She had to drop out of high school, but she has chosen to live with her choice and not regret the decision. May's husband started working out of high school. They still can't get by without help from the parents, but they seem happy when they're with their child. Thank you, Kaito. I'm glad it was you that I decided to talk to that day. If it weren't for you, I don't think that I could be so happy today. Don't be dumb. You would have been happy either way. Yeah! My name is Mizuki. I'm 21 years old. I'm always the nice guy that finishes last. I work part-time at a karaoke shop, where I bomb lovely couples in my mind. Huh, a lot of couples today, don't you think? 
Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna puke when I'm walking down the hallways from all the love songs that I hear. Ugh. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend, Mizuki? This cute girl is Haruka. She's 24 years old, but she's so cute. I forget that she's older than me sometimes. I wouldn't be complaining so much if I did. <laughs> Uh, then, do you believe in ghosts? How did we just jump to that conversation? <sighs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's just that there's something off about my room these days. Like, it feels like something's watching me. Do you live alone, Haruka? Yeah, my room feels so creepy recently. I tried installing an app to keep the ghosts away, but I'm not sure if it works. But you've been fine until recently, right? I don't think ghosts just start showing up for no reason. They don't come flying over like bugs, you know? Either it followed you home or it was connected to something you brought home with you. <gasps> Wait, the other day when I visited my parents' house, they made me take home this old Russian nesting doll. Oh no, uh, maybe that's it. I'm too scared to go home. I... Uh, will you please come home with me, Mizuki? What? Uh, please spend the night after work today. Promise me. Um, is she sure about this? I didn't know how serious she was until we got off of work. When I got dressed and exited out of the back door, Haruka was waiting for me and shoved me in her car. Um, are you sure that you want me to spend the night? Yeah, I'm serious. I was so scared I couldn't sleep last night. If I keep this up, I'll go crazy. That's exactly what the ghosts want. I'll repay you later, so please, just tonight. Uh, I don't think me being there is going to change anything, but okay. Forget about the ghosts. I don't know if I'll be able to contain myself. <sighs> this is where I live. <gasps> Can you sense it too? Oh, damn! It smells so good! I'm getting dizzy! I always thought she smelled good, but I didn't think her whole house would smell this good! Is everything okay, Mizuki? Whoa! She's so close! Ah! Where was it? What did you see? Uh, no! It wasn't a ghost that surprised me! Not the first time that that happened. I knew it. There's something wrong with this house. Uh, you probably just stacked them too high. No, it wasn't a coincidence. The other day, a brand new rubber band broke, and before that, the hands on the brand new clock started spinning. I just realized something. The most dangerous thing in this room is me. I can hear the devil whispering in my ears. Stay calm. Stay calm. Um... Would you mind letting me go now? Oh, sorry. Oh, I never realized you were so buff. I'm getting butterflies. Wait, this pretty girl is dangerous too. I wonder if she's doing this on purpose. My mission tonight is to help Haruka sleep well tonight. But my mission becomes harder and harder as time passes by. Haruka took a bath and smelled ridiculously good. She looked so cute when she made me dinner. The Ruka is like the moon that is gradually filling in. When her charm becomes full moon, the demon inside me is going to be awakened, and I'll surely turn into a werewolf. You can do this, Mizuki. You can control yourself. All right, let's go to sleep together. Together? Of course. Uh, it's the scariest at night. Who knows what could happen after the lights are out? Why don't we leave them on, then? No, I can't sleep if there's any light. What? Um, did you watch any scary movie or TV show recently? What? How did you know? Let me guess. You usually avoid them because you hate them. But you accidentally saw it? Exactly. I was at my parents' house the other day and my dad was watching something scary. I tried to close my eyes, but my dad told me that it's scarier if I shut my eyes. So I worked up the courage to open my eyes and watch, but... 
And this room became scary suddenly after that, right? Huh? Wait, did I get cursed from watching that show? No, it happens all the time to people, where they watch something scary and get paranoid. Okay, but what about the rubber bands and the clock? Rubber bands are mass-produced, so naturally there are some that are weaker than others. And the clock you bought was probably a radio clock that spins when it recalibrates the time. I see. From what I can tell, there's nothing wrong with this room. If you're afraid of Russian dolls, you should just hide them. Is she asleep already? I ended up staying awake all night. Oh, rise and shine! Oh, I haven't slept this well in a long time. Good for you! Huh? What happened to you, Mizuki? Wait, was it a ghost? No. Haruka found that she could sleep really well if I was with her. So she tried to take me home with her all the time after that. I'm afraid of turning into a werewolf one of these days. I'm way more scared of myself than ghosts! Oh. I'm Koki. I'm a college student. These are my friends, Takadu, Yuri, Erika, and Seiya. We hang out with each other all the time after school. Where should we go today? I'm hungry. Let's eat. Okay. Any recommendations, ladies? Let's check out that coffee shop in front of the station. What? I'm hungry. I want some real food. I heard they have roast beef sandwiches, though. Really? Sounds expensive, but delicious, too. Let's go. All right, then. Is everyone getting the roast beef sandwich? Yeah, it's for a limited time only, right? Let's try it. Yeah. Yep. And so, we all got the roast beef sandwich. The sandwich was $10.80, including a drink. It wasn't cheap for us college students, but sometimes, we just gotta have fun. But after we finished eating, Seiya seemed upset. What's wrong, Seiya? You're still hungry, aren't you? No, not that. Um, I forgot my wallet today. I just realized. Oh, okay. I'll lend you some cash then. Thanks, Takedu! Wait, didn't she forget her wallet the other day too? If I remember correctly, she said the same thing when we went to an all-you-can-eat buffet the other day. But I think Erica paid for her. But we all forget stuff. As long as she pays them back, it shouldn't be a problem. A few days later... What should we do today? How about karaoke? Nice! What about you two? Oh, sorry. Not today. We've got a paper to write. Alright, next time then. So, the three of us went to karaoke. It was a lot of fun. After we finished, we went to pay. But then, Seiya, what's the matter? Uh, I forgot. I don't have any money right now. It's almost payday, but... Seiya, you still haven't paid me back for the roast beef sandwich. Sorry, I know. As soon as I get paid, I'll pay you back. Fine, I'll pay for you. Thank you, Koki. I'll pay you back as soon as I get paid. Okay. Does she do this to everyone? If so, is she really gonna pay me back? A few days later, say I had work, so she went home early. Takaru, Erika, and Yuri came over to my house. Come on in! Thanks! It's been a while. Ah, your house is the best, Koki! Uh, why? Huh? Because it's free! <laughs> Huh, well, not for me. I gotta pay for electricity. <laughs> hey, what do you guys think about Saya? Saya? She barely ever pays for her own stuff. Yeah. Come to think of it, she hasn't paid me back yet. Same here. She owes us money, too. Sometimes she pays us back partially, but she asks us to lend her more money right afterwards. Do you guys keep record? Yeah. What about you, Yuri? I don't keep a record, but I remember most of it. We calculated the total amount of money she owes us. We made a shocking discovery. Wait, $500? No way she'll be able to pay us back at once. Yeah, she won't have anything left for herself. 
But we gotta do something or she won't stop. We'll just have to keep lending her money. This is bad. She's taking advantage of us. We should do something. We decided to teach her a lesson. Execution day. First, Yuri called Seiya. Hey, Yuri. Are you guys still writing that paper? I'm so hungry. Sorry, we'll be right there. Go in somewhere. We'll meet you there. Got it. It's so expensive here. Oh well. I'll just borrow some money from someone later. I'll take the Parfait Supreme. Coming right up. <sighs> Where is everyone? I'm still hungry. Whatever. I'll make them pay for being late. Hello? Koki? Where are you guys? We just left school. We're on our way to karaoke. Come with us. Yay! Karaoke! Alright, I'll see you there. Wait, how much cash do I have? Crap! I don't have any money! I was gonna make someone pay for me. But the parfait is 14 bucks. Hello? Cookie? Um, can you lend me money? I'm at a coffee shop, but I don't have any. Huh? Why did you eat there then? And you said you were coming to karaoke. But how are you planning to pay for that? Um, I just realized it now. Just talk to the store manager or something then. What? Don't call the cops on me! I was waiting for you guys! Come on, help me out! Well, the thing is, you haven't paid me back for the last time we went to karaoke. Remember that? What? Fine, be like that! Seiya hung up on me. She called everyone else, but they all said no to her. She was done for. Nobody was willing to help her. I'm sorry. I don't have any money. Huh? Why did you order food then? Um, my friends usually lend me money, but they couldn't make it today. They called the cops on her. Say I called her parents crying. They lived far away, but they rushed over to take care of the mess she made. They also found out about what she was up to, making her friends pay for everything. Her parents were decent people, though. They got furious with her and paid us all back. I am so sorry. This is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't have a lot of money, but I still wanted to hang out with you guys. Seiya, you should have just told us. Huh? We're mad because you lied to us. We trusted you, but you betrayed us. Even if you don't have money, we can still hang out. All you had to do was tell us. I'm sorry. Soon, Seiya stopped hanging out with us. I heard she started hanging out with a different group, but she did the same thing and got caught again. I'm not sure, but maybe she does this for the thrill of it? Who knows? All right, for the next segment of this show, we'd like to hear from the viewers. Please send us some of your fondest high school memories. High school memories, huh? Nothing good for me there. My name is Riku. I'm a 26-year-old businessman. I have some painful memories of high school. I was a fat boy when I was in high school. I sucked sports and my grades were mediocre. There was nothing special about me. And there was this guy who would pick on me every day. Hey, Riku! I've got a new nickname for you, man! This guy's name is Daisuke. He was handsome, athletic, and smart. He was a popular guy in class. But I hated him. Because his hobby was to pick on me. You always give me the weirdest names like Giant Isopod and Sweet and Sour Pork. I hate those names. Hey everyone, listen up! Rika's new nickname is... Anaclosaurus! Let's call Rico Anaclosaurus today. <laughs> Anaclosaurus? <laughs> he would pick on me like that by giving me new nicknames every day. Jeez, why does he get such a kick out of this? I'm going to search online anyways, though. Hmm, 
So this is an Anaclosaurus. Daisuke was a class jock. If he did or said anything, everyone else followed suit. He could control the class just on a whim like that. It must have been fun for him. But for me, it wasn't fun at all. And when I look back on those days, I'm reminded of those bitter memories. Hmm, I wonder what he's doing now. I remember hearing that he got into a prestigious college. He's probably in a good company, getting all the ladies about now. <sighs> Winning in life. <sighs> oh well, I'm over it. The TV show reminded me of him, and the very next day, I ran into him at work. Wait, is that you? Daisuke, right? Huh? Who are you? It, oh, uh, it's me, Rika Matoba. What? Matoba? Riku Matoba? No way! What a coincidence! <laughs> I knew it. What's this guy doing at our company? Hey, looks like you've lost some weight. You look better, man. With those looks, I'm sure you found a girlfriend or two by now, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I guess. Man, he hasn't changed at all. So, what are you doing here? Are you lost or something? No, I work here. No way! I just started working here last week! They were looking for good programmers, and they recruited me! Oh, good for you. I didn't know. I'm not that familiar about what goes on in the Department of Development. I did hear that they were hiring someone, but I didn't know it was him. Wow, what a surprise! <laughs> this is a pretty good company. I'm surprised they hired you. <laughs> Let me guess. You suck at work. Uh, that's not for me to decide. Oh, jeez. He really hasn't changed. I was hoping he would have grown up by now. Oh, Daisuke, there you are. The conference room is that way. Yeah, sorry, manager. I just ran into one of my classmates from high school. Oh, you two were classmates? Yeah, I used to give him all kinds of nicknames. The good old days. You remember? Like Sea Slug and Dung Beetle, right? <laughs> that doesn't seem like a compliment. <laughs> Maybe I just didn't have a very good vocabulary. Sorry, bro. That's enough. There's no need to tell me about your dark history. Things have changed for you and Mr. Matoba now. You're right, sir. I'm a promising programmer, and unlike Riku, I've got... I'm so sorry, Executive Director Matoba. I don't know who found this rude kid. I'll be sure to warn him strictly and check with the other supervisors. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm sure he's a good worker. So let's hope he redeems himself through work. Executive Director... Who? Um, me. What? Why the hell are you the Executive Director? Did you use some backdoor connections or something? Did you not hear me? I said that's enough! Forget it! I won't approve of your participation in the development meeting! Why don't you just go pick up trash outside the office? Oh! No! Manager Amano is very strict about manners, so I recommend that you properly apologize. Or else, he might really kick you out of the department. Shut up! What the hell did you do to get that position anyways? It's because Executive Director Matoba is diligent and capable. Oh, wait. Is that you, May? We were in the same class in high school, weren't we? Yes, long time no see, Daisuke. It's me, May Takaguchi. I'm in the secretarial division. You remember, right, May? How much of a loser Riku was. I have no idea how you remember him, but according to my memories, Riku was a gentle person who always diligently worked hard at any assignment he was given. And you were a lowlife that got a kick out of making fun of people. I was disgusted when you tried asking me out back then. Huh? Taisuke asked you out, May? <sighs> Nothing to be jealous about. I rejected him without hesitation. Wait! You guys aren't just co-workers, are you? Are you two? Uh, yes. We're dating now. We'll be getting married soon. What? Hey, that's still a secret. Uh, yeah, but 
I was so mad at how Daisuke was making fun of you. If Manager Amano didn't say anything, I would have been the one yelling. Oh, you heard all that? No! What? I was Riku the loser, doing better in life than me! It's pretty obvious. It's because you haven't grown up at all. After that, I heard from the manager that Daisuke quit the company. He must not have been able to let his ego go. Feeling superior to your peers in high school is like being a big fish in a little pond. I think the people who persevered through hardships at a younger age do better when they go out in the real world. Oh, I'm so excited about our marriage. Hey, May, do you have any high school memories that you want to forget? Of course, so many. Not only do I wish I can forget them, but I wish everyone else would too. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't recommend talking about your high school memories like it's some legacy. It may have been a good memory for you, but sometimes you can remind people of things that they wanted to forget. My name is Riku. I'm a salesman. Oh, hello Riku. I'm happy to see you again. Thank you, sir. I've prepared a few different kinds of snacks for you today. Which ones do you like the most? Thank you so much, but really, you shouldn't have. Hmm. I'm sorry if you don't like them very much. No, sir, not at all. They're all so good. It's impossible for me to pick my favorite. So I'll take this one with me. Oh, that's good to hear. Well, if you like them all, I'll have all of them packaged for you when you leave. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> this man is the president of one of the companies that we do business with. His name is Mr. Kusaka. He's very fond of me, and he always welcomes me enthusiastically like this. I try my best to keep him on track, because if I adjust myself to him, we could end up spending hours just small talking. Would you mind if we got right into it, Mr. Kusaka? Yeah, sure. But everything you recommend is so good, I'll probably end up taking it all. That's very kind of you to say, sir. Well, please, let me explain anyways. I have no idea why he likes me so much. All I know is that he says he likes me as a person over anything work-related. And Mr. Kusaka's company is our number one client currently. Thanks to him, my results at work are great. And so is the overall company ratings. I have no reason to dislike this man either. But I'm on edge recently about how unprofessional he's becoming. So, have you thought about my other offer? Uh, oh, that offer. Yes, about taking my daughter out on a date once. But, sir. I showed her that picture of you, and she seems very interested. I think you guys would be great together. You guys should get married. We haven't even met yet, sir. Very true. You guys should date each other first. So this is the first step. It can't possibly hurt you to take her out once on a date. Take a look. She's beautiful too, don't you think? Oh, you're right. She's so pretty. And that's how I ended up taking Mr. Kusaka's daughter out on a date. Nice to meet you. My name is Yuria Kusaka. N nice to meet you too. My name is Riko Kurosaki. Wow, she's even prettier than in the pictures. Shall we go then? I made reservations at a restaurant nearby. When you say nearby, how close are we talking? Huh? Like a 10 minute walk or something. Uh, let's take a taxi then. Huh? But we would be getting off almost immediately. It's their job to drive people. They don't deserve to work in that industry if they don't want to drive short distances. They should be thankful for any amount of money they're being paid. Huh? This girl. She doesn't seem anything like her father. But that was just the beginning. Things got worse when we got to the restaurant. She would complain to the staff about every little thing she noticed. Like little marks on the plate, minor spills when they placed our plates down, and the noise when they carried our finished dishes away. The staff seemed so irritated by her. And to top it all off, when they mistook my dessert, she asked for the owner of the restaurant. Don't worry about it, Uriah. I'll just eat this one. They either made a mistake when taking your order or communicating it afterwards. Either way, we should get to the bottom of this and find out who was responsible for this error. And you deserve to eat what you wanted to, don't you think? 
She's not wrong, but she's so aggressive about it. I can't stand this. I mean, it's important to properly communicate and everything, but there's no need to publicly execute them. If this was my restaurant, I would never allow any staff to serve my customers with such poor service skills. If you ask me, these people are simply unprofessional. Oh, I can't enjoy my dinner at a place like this. Don't you think we deserve to get what we're paying for? Uh, Urea? I couldn't enjoy my dinner at all, either. Oh, right? This restaurant is such a... Because you were blabbing about the imperfections! Do you know what they call people like you? Complainers! What? Are you calling me a complainer? The staff are human too! Maybe they aren't at their best today and are making careless errors. Why can't you forgive that? Well, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if I was in their position. Okay, fine. You may be proud of how outstanding you are, and for being strict to yourself and others, but you're greatly mistaken. In my opinion, an outstanding person is someone who can forgive others for their mistakes, and even help them out if they can. Oh, that would just spoil them. You shouldn't expect so much from others. Not everyone is alike, and not everyone is as capable as yourself. You may have a clear picture of everything and be able to act accordingly, but that's not the standard. You must not know what it feels like to not be able to do something or sympathize with someone's upbringings. It doesn't bother you to hurt someone's feelings. I despise people like that. I ended up exploding on her. I paid the restaurant extra and left by myself. Wait! Riku, please! What do you want? Why don't you just grab a taxi if you hate walking so much? Ah, uh, I'm... I'm sorry uh, for making you angry. If you're going to apologize, it should be to the staff at the restaurant. I was rude to you too. But I don't feel like I owe you an apology. So, I don't deserve one from you either. I left Yuria alone and left. That was a rude move on my part. I'm sure Mr. Kasaka will be furious. I hope he doesn't stop doing business with my company after this. But contrary to my expectations, a few days later... Well, well! It seems like my daughter was quite rude to you the other day. I brought you a sorry gift. No, sir. I should have at least taken her back home. It's our fault, as parents, for spoiling her. We thought we were teaching her right, but we must not have been objective enough. I'm embarrassed. No, please, don't apologize, Mr. Kusaka. But still, it seems that my daughter was touched by your words, Riku. She's asking for another date. When are you free? Huh? She wants another date? I expected her to hate me. No, not at all! All she talks about is you since then. I knew you guys would be a great match! <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know how to face her. After a while, I scheduled another date with Yuria. She seemed much softer the second time we met. She told me that she wanted to hear more stories about what I had to say, and learn how to be someone who could understand other people's feelings like me. She still tends to take things to the extreme, but I respect her for being someone who can think for herself and act boldly on her beliefs. Even though we started off on bad terms, we're a couple now, and we plan to get married someday. I'm Mizuki. I always liked working out. After graduating college, I started working as a personal trainer at a gym. People come here for all kinds of reasons. Some to get healthy, some come to lose weight, some come to gain muscle and some come for rehabilitation work. My job is to come up with a personalized workout plan for each one of them. Each trainer is a specialty. I specialize in helping people get in shape and gain muscle. Mizuki-san, thank you. Thanks to you, my skin is silky smooth these days. My husband thought I was having an affair or something. I told him I'm working out at the gym so he'll call me pretty again, just like the old days. When I told him that, he blushed. Oh, it was so cute. Anyways, I'm glad I started coming here. Thank you. Aw, working out for someone you love? I admire that. Mizuki-san, let's do this! Hello. Let me check your program. Give me a second. Mizuki-san, I can't wait! My muscles are aching! Come on now, let's go! 
And he's quite the character, too. But he's such a hard worker. I admire that. Ah! One, two, three! Ah! I really like my job. When people get in shape, the expression on their face changes, too. I like watching people change, I guess. That's why I'm always excited to meet new clients. But today was the exception. Nana-san, this is Mizuki. He'll be your personal trainer. I'm Nana. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Nana-san. Um, I wasn't expecting to see you here. What's up? Uh, what do you mean? I think it's pretty obvious. I want to get in shape. But every time I asked you to come to the gym with me, you said no. That day, my new client was a childhood friend, Nana. We've been friends since we were little kids. She was always the little chubby one in the group. The thing is, I always had a crush on her. I didn't care if she was chubby, but I also liked working out. So I always asked her to come with me, but she always said no. Uh, no, 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 it, it wouldn't make a difference. That's what she always said. Nana coming to the gym to get in shape? She must have a new boyfriend or something. That has to be it. You g got a crush on someone? What, do I have to tell you my life story? Uh, sorry! Well, it's you, so whatever. I want to get in shape and ask someone out. Will you help me out? Of course. She sounds pretty determined. I like her just the way she is. But she wants to lose the weight to be with someone else. Oh boy. I can't ask her out now. After all these years? Nah. Once I asked her out, it was back in junior high. But Nana said... Uh, I'll think about it. She never gave me an answer though. Basically, I got dumped. It was kind of awkward, but we began our session. I wish she would just give up. No, that's not right. Uh-huh. What is it? Nothing. It's just I've never seen you like this. You're looking good, Mizuki. Oh, uh, thanks! Stop it! You're thinking of asking someone out. Stop playing with me. <laughs> but this is my job. I gotta do my best to help her. After months of training, she did it. She got in shape. Mizuki, thank you. I didn't know it was possible, but I did it. Don't thank me. This was all you. You've been working really hard, even outside the gym. Good work. <laughs> I'm glad you were my trainer. Thanks. Oh, now I can ask him out. I'm going to see him tomorrow. Good luck. Oh, she's finally going to do it. She was always cute, but now she's even prettier. <sighs> I'm so jealous. <sighs> she can get any guy with those looks. The next day, I had the day off. I stayed in bed even after I woke up. I couldn't stop thinking about Nana. Aww. I bet she's having fun with her new boyfriend just about now. Who can that be? Hey! Nana? What the? I thought you were going to see that guy. Uh, yeah, uh, not yet. I see. Hey, Mizuki. Listen, um, will you go out with me? What? <laughs> Sorry to surprise you like this. The guy I was talking about, it's you. I've been working out for you. Wait, hold on. You like me, Nana? But when I asked you out in junior high, you said you'll think about it, and you never gave me an answer. But back then, you were talking about becoming a personal trainer, remember? I thought I was too chubby to be your girlfriend. But I was planning to tell you as soon as I got into shape, but I tried all kinds of stuff and it didn't work, so I ended up asking for your help. Uh, I'm so happy! Oh, man! I couldn't stand the thought of you being with someone else. <laughs> I'm so happy! Uh, hey. And so, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. I've always loved her. But after seeing all the hard work she put in for me, I loved her even more. <laughs> hey, hey, don't start crying now. 
working hard for someone you love. Ah, the power of love. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications.